today is important and as such each moment each day is important because sun has risen for certain days we celebrate with more fervor than others firstly today is 25th of december celebrated as the birth of jesus second today is miladul nabi that is the birthday of holy prophet and the third the day is important because you are here and to me that is more important because you are here the tra- jesus does not need transformation holy prophet does not need transformation you and i need transformation you and i have to continue our journey the inward journey yesterday i was looking at one of the movies of yogan he termed it the science of spirituality is very methodological it is the play of the energy how it is absorbed in your system and begins to work with you in one of the hindu scriptures bhagavad gita it is in one of the sutra it is said that first of all this yoga this i gave it to sun and from sun it came to man and then it came to the third now these three things has to be seen sun is the symbol of light energy the moment sun rises everything begins to be alive the flowers start opening their petals birds start chirping the road that was quiet is start having commuters and the moment that light comes in everything begins to shine in its splendor and glory then where does this light go it does something within us and then light begins it works at the level of the mind that is where it comes man man means mind and one of the poet his line is very important aate hain ye mazami khayal mein ghayab se everything that comes to our mind thoughts words it comes from an unknown realm that we do not know where it is you can see that when you open your laptop immediately you are connected to the internet and through that through a particular device you can connect to cyber space and everything is stored in the cyber space but you cannot see it until you know the mechanism how to manifest it so thoughts come to the mind and the light when it falls it becomes the thoughts and when the thoughts descend at the level of the body through the organs of action and perception they become our actions this is very scientific and according to the islamic understanding it is said god created noor light and everything was created through that light scientifically you can say everything that is created the flower the birds chirping everything is created with the light of the sun so once we understand this this is very scientific we can start bringing the transformation into our lives 
and I had termed this particular retreat as transformation of human consciousness. It's not like you come for one hour, sit down in meditation and after that you continue to do your things. When light comes, descends at the level of the mind, something happens, the petals open, the flower blossoms, its beauty and fragrance manifests. The beauty and the fragrance of the flower manifest in a different way than your own beauty, your own understanding. It will come in the form of consciousness. How you interact with the people, how you look at the small events. And if that does not happen, we are still far away and the moment this begins, you are in the spiritual path, then you can change the guest out. Any circumstance and situation that comes that can become a door to take you to the beyond. Now it depends upon how you look at it and how you transform that particular situation. And moment to moment these situations come. That is why the life of these people, is the masters, is important because they show us the way to live moment to moment. We cannot look at the macro, but the macro can be is a sum total and plus more of the individual units. Units of time, units of our actions put together, it becomes a greater action. And when that happens, the things begin to change. We have to look into our lives moment to moment. Simple things, when add together, they become more meaningful. Give you a few examples. In the morning, you dress up to go to work. You put on clothes. How are you responding to those? It is said someone asked Buddha, are you a philosopher or thinker? He said, I am a physician. I cannot give you, show you things, but I can give you the vision so that you can see things. What do you do? I eat, I drink, I walk, I talk. But this is what everyone does. Are you aware of it? Buddha said. This similar question when was asked with a Sufi master, Nakshbandi Sheikh Hadrat Ubaidullah Ahar, and he responded in the same way. He did not talk, remembering the scriptures, saying anything else saying prayers, saying this and that. He simply said, I eat, I drink, I walk, I talk, I sleep. What is so special about it? You dress up in the morning. You are now dressed, ready to go. You are looking for your car keys and you cannot find it. You are yelling at others at home. Maybe it may happen that someone would have misplaced it or put it elsewhere. But who is responsible for it? If you had put it in the right place, then the children cannot pick up and use it as a toy. You are moving out of the house. You are looking for a handbag and you forget that this thing or that. When you return, you reach to the work. How do we greet one another when we reach to the office? Mechanically, whether, this, whether the person pays attention to it or not, we go on saying good morning and then keep on walking. Neither your word good morning has meaning, nor the person to whom it is addressed is paying any attention to it. 
Good morning is a gesture. Good morning is an expression of inner joy. And when it comes out from you and it reaches to the other, it creates, it is energy. And when that energy is transferred onto the other, it brings about a change. And this is what the masters do, simple gestures, expressions, and it teaches you how to live life moment to moment. You are eating food, you are cooking, you are doing the office work. How many things we do on a day-to-day -day basis? If we try to choose a certain events and try to remember to be aware at that time, the moment we are aware, the things begin to change. Then there are certain exercises that we can use in order to bring about change at the level of consciousness. And when change takes place at the level of consciousness, everything else starts falling into the right place. Two things are there. Either you can start bringing, putting things in the right perspective from the outer or from the inner. From the outer it is easier because we are at the level of the body and the mind. In fact, the level of body-mind. We are doing things. If we understand the flow of energy, how does it work, then we can start working in that direction. Let us look at the car. Each one of us has car to drive. Car works on a battery that gives the car a tumbleless start. And after the battery gives a start, the car changes its gear and moves in a different mechanism. Battery has two poles, the positive and the negative. Which one is important? One comes from the outer source, the positive. The negative comes from within. And when these two neutralize one another, the spark happens. And with that spark, the car starts. Then you give it a fuel. It begins to idle and continue. If, for instance, your car is not starting, the battery is down, what are we going to do? You clean up the terminals, the left terminal and the right terminal, keep it greased, and still if it is not working, then you have to take a jump start, connect it to some other battery, some other source, so that it can start. And then you have to allow it to run so that it gathers the charge. The human life is like that. If one you have started running your battery, the life's battery that is consciousness on its own, then it will continue to run. But if it has lost the charge, then you have to connect, give it a jump start or connect it to some other source so that it can be recharged. So that if somehow or the other your battery is running low, it can be recharged. But once it goes on its own, then you do not have to worry upon. It will continue to work efficiently and it will give you a nice ride wherever you want to go. So consciousness is that vehicle that takes you from moment to moment in every circumstance and situations. Time and again I have given examples. How do we interact in a particular situation? For instance, you are standing in a queue to pay for something, maybe at the restaurant, maybe at the ticket window, wherever it is. And the cashier, the person, he cashes your item, whatever the food items you desire, and then she goes and picks up and gives it to you. 
But if that time she happens to go on the phone and you are not being attended, we do not know whether the call is important or anything else, but we react, respond in a negative way. If you have awareness at that moment, maybe something very important has come that she has to respond to that. Otherwise, she is a, a very prompt customer service person. Customer service is important for her. My own example was, I am not prepared. I have just decided that I have to go and pay a customs duty at the customs cashier counter. And after that, I had few other errands to do, so time was important. When I reached, I passed on my documents. The person was handling, finishing the transaction that she was doing. She said, the system is running very slow. It will take a little longer time. I said, that's wonderful. Now you do not hear these words. That's wonderful. I can spend a little longer time with you and you know in relationship longer you stay better is the result. Immediately the gestalt changed. The person was or maybe she is trying her effort to see where the bug is there in the system and she can run it faster. So she is making effort but if people start getting on and started start making remarks. Each culture responds to these things in a different way and individual also. So there is an American way of responding to this situation. There is a Trinidad way, there is an Indian way. Everyone responds in that own way and Chinese respond in their own way and we cannot understand what they are saying. If you have awareness then your actions will begin to change and then you can bring about transformation into that person as well when i said this the person said dazed it came as a shock he said what did you say would you repeat it again i repeated it again she said wait let me write it Simple words, I did not say any philosophy, I did not give her any teaching, but what has descended in the form of light and manifested at the level of the thoughts and thoughts become action and then I responded to that. The many situations like these come in your life, in everybody's life. How do you respond to that situation? Simple thing, wishing a good morning to someone. I give you an example. One of the Sufi master who happened to be my grand great grandfather, he had a habit every morning when he will finish his taking his bath, he will come and sit down in the room or somewhere on the chair and say his whatever he has to do he has to say his prayers he has to say or whatever it is now normally people go unconsciously whether the person's attention is towards you or not go and bow down according to hindu system touch the feet according to islamic tradition hold the hands and kiss and in different ways so the everyone was doing it in that way but are they getting the attention of the sheikh or not? One man remained standing in the corner for the duration that the sheikh finished his prayers. When he finished his prayers, sheikh looked at him and immediately he bowed down in gratitude towards him. So whose salutation has been accepted and whose was not accepted? It was he whose salutation was accepted. Then he tried to give his introduction, he said, no, I know you, you don't need to tell me. I may not know your face, but I know the consciousness that knows the mannerism, how to respond, how to pay salutations to a sheikh, that shows the inner growth.
there was nothing any system or anything but what had happened the consciousness that has manifested he knew how to pay respect regard to the other or in the simple thing when you are going to the office how you have to say good morning to your boss or to your employees these are not part of the scriptures when i had been writing the preface to the first book meditation the way to self realization i wrote it is not important to me whether the incarnation ram is an incarnation or jesus or holy prophet or anything i'm not interested in any one of these i am interested in you because you can be transformed and i am here to transform you but whatever technique whatever methodology i have to use i will use it so it does not matter to me why this thing happened in the past you are here and i can bring about transformation into your life and you can bring about it's like the story of a person if you really want to know how does a particular drink taste how would you know you have to taste it you cannot just go and theorize it and or ask those people who have drunk it Umar Khayyam says, what can you gain, O fool, by talking about those who are drunk and gone? You have to drink yourself to see what this particular wine does it into your system. Then you will know and you don't need to ask anything else. You have to attain the antenna of maturity. Then you go into the experience and then you will know what it is. and that's where the spiritual journey the spiritual path begins i have incorporated every single aspect that human being requires on a day to day basis whether it is maintaining the relation with his spouse dealing on a day to day basis or cooking because this is cooking is one of the most important aspect you can forget about the meditation forget about anything but you cannot forget about the food so when i started the program and the first radio program began that time i was writing the script and someone else was using her voice to do the program so when i gave her the script she asked a question is this the spiritual program that you meant the hour of introspection i said yes it began there is one of the most important act in our life that is eating how do we eat our food we have a platter full of delicious food in front of us we have a morsel in our mouth the next one is in the hand and our eyes are focused on what is on the platter in that we do not enjoy what is in our mouth and then on top of that we continue to chew So when you are talking you are missing the taste of the food the food eating and cooking becomes a meditation every act becomes a meditation the quality of your being is that you put into any act that becomes creativity and god is the creator so if you follow that root of creativity you can reach the creator anything that you do if your creativity and creativity is a, is an aspect of consciousness your understanding things begin to change into us on a day to day basis and then how many things we do if we choose five things for the day that at five different occasions i will act differently then you will find at the end of the day there is a different kind of satiation a different kind of feeling within and when these things are added and it becomes ad infinitum all of a sudden there is a change then people around you will find that what are you doing you are looking your behavior is different your approach you are not acting in the same way as you used to before 
your food is tasting better you are looking even uh, more handsome and beautiful because the inner beauty is manifesting in the outer world through your expressions through your mannerisms and that is what is the process of transformation of human consciousness if we can bring about transformation in consciousness we can create a new type of human being that is harmonious that is operating from a different center with the blend of heart the mind the intellect and the emotions and that is one of the most important aspect into our lives